Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, here it is Monday morning. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. I've got to tell you in all truthfulness, mine wasn't much fun. I got my first round of shots to go to Ethiopia this November. And by the way, those of you who have pledged to support that financially, would you please send me another email? My computer went down on me a while back. I lost all of that correspondence. We had a wonderful outpouring of pledges to support that, so we need to hear from you. Now, we don't want your money yet, all right? We're still in the process of getting everything all firmed up, but we, uh, I tell you what, the, that shot knocked me down. Doctor said I might be sick for two, as much as two to three days, and I went to bed on Saturday morning, and I slept for 10 straight hours. <laughs> yeah, wasn't much fun. Okay. Uh, my name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma, and this is what I call my morning musings. I'm sharing thoughts with you on the eschatology of the parables of Jesus. I'm telling you what, folks, this study is so rich, and I'm not even touching the hem of the garment. I hope you understand that. I hope that you will avail yourself of some of the additional material. The 2006 Preterist Pilgrim Weekend, some great speeches by, by great speakers, as well as my 32 lesson series on the parables of Jesus. Go to the website, eschatology.org or bibleprophecy.com, order one or both, say that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I will send you free a special lesson on romancing the stone. This is directly related to the parables, and boy, oh boy, oh boy, is that powerful stuff. All right. Well, in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus told the parable of a man who made a great wedding feast for his son, sent out his servants to call those who had already been invited. Those servants were mistreated. They were killed. The master of the feast sent out his armies. He killed those wicked men and burned their city. I want you to see that we find the exact same motif in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, we find this great city, Babylon. Now, here's something that is really important for you to realize. Babylon is called the harlot. The word harlot in Scripture is a word that doesn't mean simply an immoral woman. Oh, there are a few places where it can. But as Stephen Temple in a fantastic book has demonstrated who is the mother of harlots, drunken with the blood of the saints, in the book Revelation. It's on my website. But as Stephen proves categorically, the term harlot, as used in Scripture, especially in the prophetic text, it refers in the great preponderance of cases to a wife who has become unfaithful to the marriage covenant. Do you catch the power of that? Revelation speaks about Babylon the harlot, in other words, a city that had once been married to Yahweh but had become unfaithful to that covenant and was now about to be dis divorced and destroyed. You really need a copy of Stephen's book, by the way. Go to my website and order that. Now watch this, how it unfolds. In the book of Revelation, when Babylon, the unfaithful harlot wife, is destroyed, the declaration is made, let us rejoice and be glad for the time of the wedding has come. Wow! What do we find in Revelation? This harlot city Babylon had killed the prophets, Revelation 16.6. She has killed the apostles and the prophets sent to her, Revelation 18, 20, and 24. And now she is to be destroyed, but when she is destroyed, the wedding of the Son takes place. What do we find in Matthew 22? We find the invitation to the wedding being given by the servants of the Lord, i.e. the prophets and the apostles and prophets, they are slain by whom? Jerusalem. But at the destruction of the city, the wedding takes place. 
Now, folks, listen to me. Literal Babylon in Iraq was never married to God, could never become a harlot bride. Even the Roman Catholic Church lies outside of this parameter because of the temporal constraints of the book of Revelation. This, all of those things were about to shortly take place. Guess what? New York and New Jersey don't fit <laughs> because they were never in a covenant relationship with Yahweh, never married to Yahweh. Only one city was ever married to Yahweh, became unfaithful, and was to be cast out. Who did Jesus call this adulterous generation? Matthew 12, Matthew 16. O covenant Judah, O covenant Jerusalem. She had committed adultery just like the ten northern tribes. She was about to be divorced just like the ten northern tribes. She was about to be destroyed just like the ten northern tribes. But Yahweh, but God <clears throat> was going to transform her through the righteous remnant and remarry Israel transformed into the body of Christ. What a beautiful picture. Horrific on one side, yes. Beautiful on the other. And it shows us that the coming of Christ, the second coming of Matthew 25, the time of the resurrection, the time of the wedding, was in A.D. 70. At the time of the judgment of the harlot bride. Hey, look, you just got to get this material on the parables of Jesus. Go to my websites and order that and let me know you saw it on YouTube or Facebook. We got so much more. Thanks for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. We'll see you on the flip side.